campus all day today. More than 15 years ago, a decision was made to open a daycare, and so I gave my notice at the center that I loved working at, and without really any fear at all, just excitement, we opened a program. I thought that I could operate a program that would be different. I loved everywhere that I have ever worked. I knew that I would miss my colleagues at my last center, my director, and most importantly, the children and families. But again, I really thought I could do something different. And that's when Kids Are Kids opened in 1995. From the beginning, we involved parents. We had a parent committee formed that first year, and we've always had parents involved in numerous and varied ways. We are delighted and happy to have our current chair of the committee present this evening to celebrate this monumentous occasion. They've nominated us for this award of excellence, and so it makes it even more special to have Linda McKay here this evening. Please join me in acknowledging Linda. We also would want to thank Scholars Choice. They provided many exceptional products for us to work with the children, and we appreciate that they've done this for our field. In addition to having the parents very involved right from the beginning, we've always had a huge amount of involvement in community. We've raised over $10,000 for the IWK, having had many years of a family bowl thon and we took great pride in presenting at the telethon annually. We've often participated in Christmas Daddies. We gathered toys for a daycare in another country that suffered a horrible natural disaster. We've done food drives time and again, and always had the Salv Salvation Army Angel Tree each year. These elements of Kids Are Kids, having families involved, having community involvement, and teaching the kids about the importance of community are intrinsic elements that are key to our program right from the beginning. <laughs> With regards to the program, we were all about being child-centered and meeting the children's needs first and foremost. And that is very much what I refer to as the cake. All of the other things, being there for and about the children, uh, Sorry. All of the other things that we do are what I think of as the icing. While icing is great on cake and goes hand in hand, being there for and about the children is absolutely key to everything that we've done. At the beginning, was, it was just about being child-centered, and we've often spoken about the wonder, the discovery, and the experience of children's learning. We took training as a team in high scope, and then we've done numerous sessions with Liz over the years about true emergent curriculum. But what really came about in cementing the core of what we approach and how we work with children was in 2007 at a conference with Bev Boss here in Halifax. CAYC had brought her here, and while listening to her doing the keynote, I was sitting at the top of the auditorium with tears running down my face. Every single thing that she said completely resonated to the very heart of all the things that we are dedicated to for and about children. When I went afterwards to meet her and was talking to her, I said with conviction, I have to come to your program. I have to come to your center. And she looked me in the eye in a way that only Bev Boss can do. And she said, you'd better. And I knew that I had to make that happen. That following summer, less than a year later, three of us went to Roseville, California. And since then, every summer, we've sent several staff. This summer, four of our staff are going. It's really, it was really, as I said, has cemented all that we believe about children. Partnered with all of the neural research we've read about and all the other conferences and workshops we continue to take, we marry that information with Bev Boss and Michael Lehman's philosophies. Something that really sums it up with regards to their teaching, and they are so detailed and elemental if I were to share them, but the real thing that speaks so loudly and clearly is making the experiences for the children real and authentic. Bev often says, if it hasn't been in the hands or in the body, it can't be in the brain. Sometimes she actually says, if it hasn't been in the hands, the body, and the heart, it can't be in the brain. That's something we try to remind ourselves of daily and hourly, so that the children can be experiencing things to the fullest. The difference, the difference in their play and their interactions, the richness is so apparent, that we had always thought we had a good program, but through this journey, which I must say is still continuing, 
We now know with complete confidence that we are meeting the children's needs, giving them what they need to grow and develop in optimal ways, to feel heard, to feel listened to, to feel like they're valued and appreciated. And it's not easy. We have to think about it each and every moment, but it's so worth it in the long run. And we so appreciate that tonight, we are receiving validation for that work, for the commitment, and the dedication. I'd like to end with a somewhat unusual story. A couple of years ago, I had gone to Alaska, and I made a decision to ride the world's longest zip rider. It was quite scary. Went to the top of a mountain and went down a zip line. You had to sign a 12-page document before you went. And that 12-page document pretty much listed everything that could possibly go wrong, including getting stuck somewhere over the rainforest or partway down the mountain, losing an appendage, and so on and so on for 12 pages. But I thought that ultimately, the thrill would outweigh the risks. And when I came back to Halifax, many in ECE said, why would you do something like that? And I want to share something with each of you. Every single one of you is a risk taker. Every day we encourage the children to take risks. We know that if the toddler doesn't fall down at some point as they're learning to walk and never experience failure, they will not get to success. Success and failure must be both experienced for them to gain the knowledge of what success is and for them to acquire the skills to move on. Each and every day, you risk by giving the children experiences you know to be critical. When a parent asks you to give a preschooler homework, and believe you me, that's happened to us, I don't know about you, when you explain the developmentally inappropriateness of that and stand up for what you believe in for children, you are taking a risk. Every time you act as a guide or a facilitator, as a child is exploring their environment and negotiating with their peers, and you take a moment to stand and let them make those decisions and be in that moment, you are risk taking. As you share with information with parents about what is best practices and what you know to be true for the children to develop, you are taking risks. You're risk taking along with the children. So perhaps the majority of you would not want to go on the world's longest zip rider. But what I want to say to you is that I know that my colleagues and my fellow professionals, in many, many ways, you wrote it with me because we're taking those risks together. We can all be proud of all of our work that we do, and on Monday we can take risks together again and share in our dedication. So thank you very much for tonight. <laughs>